uh, if I'm anchored down with my third finger, that's going to be toughest. And like we always said before, first finger can move sort of independently. Second finger can move not, not quite as well. The pinky can move actually very well independently. But that third finger is really tough. So what's tough about this is that we're anchoring with that third finger, which is already a little bit weak. And then we're trading that power into so an already diminished power into the pinky which is which is going to make it even more diminished there is something beneficial about our third finger to pinky now it's a little bit tough here because we're we're stretching one one further fret away is that we have accuracy if if you if we were to do this so glenn if we were to do this like moving from our first finger as the anchor to our pinky we'd have a little bit more um we'd have a little bit more strength in there because we're not anchoring with a weaker finger like our third finger that's that's close. We have a little bit more uh, power to use, right? We can, we can use the, the, the power of this part of our hand as well. Uh, the problem is we lose the accuracy, right? It's almost like just throwing a dart from a little bit further away and a little bit further away. So uh, try this exercise. It, it, we'll, we'll do it on the top strings. There's no reason to do it all the way down the neck. So this is, this is the exercise that I always like, is if we do the, the seventh fret, um, on the top string with our third finger, with our ring finger, right? And we're just going to go ring finger, pinky, ring finger, pinky, two frets away. So it'll be like seven, eight, seven, nine. Yep. Now, instead of moving that, so this is, this is the problem with a lot of, uh, third finger to pinky exercises, or even the ones that I'll, I, I do, which, which would sort of be like a walk down. We're going to leave that third finger where it is. So we're going to do... We're just going down those strings and then back again. You start on the seventh fret. Yeah, underneath. Yep. So uh, no, no, no. So so your third finger won't leave the seventh fret of that top string. So right. seven, eight, seven, nine. Eight, so nine. now the, yeah, now this is also going to be a like a right hand exercise too because you're, you're you're staying on the top string. Now you're going back and forth. Now you're doing. Uh, from the sixth to the fourth string. So there's going to be a little bit of right hand technique with this as well. There's no real reason, and not especially for what we're working on, there's no real reason to continue, you know, like all the way. You know, that's that's not as necessary. So that, that, that's a lot of discomfort and stretch for, for not really that much gain. But what, what, for the first three strings, it's great. Now the next part of the exercise is third fret goes down to your middle finger on the, um, uh, I'm sorry, the seventh fret, your third finger, seventh fret goes down to the sixth fret with your middle finger. And it'll be the same thing, but you're going to go six, eight to your pinky six, nine. So am I allowed to pick up the middle finger when I do it? Nope. Nope. That's, that's going to be our main point, but that's going to make the, so this is going to make the accuracy, uh, the accuracy may be better, but your strain might be a little bit worse because we don't have full leverage. Now, the, 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 the middle finger is the middle, the middle ground of this. Because if I now, the, ne the very last part is first finger on the fifth fret. Now we're saying, oh man, I've got full leverage and I've got full strength now. But my accuracy might be diminished because I'm not anchored with any of those middle strings. So this is almost better stretch, better... Um, musculature right if i do it that way then with the middle finger it's a little bit of diminished accuracy and a little bit of diminished strength because i'm sort of in that middle ground and then the third finger is going to be better accuracy way diminished strength because i'm sort of just anchoring with these the weaker part of my hand and it's just a way for us to to, to power that pinky a little bit in a way where you know if, if we're doing that this this particular song is great that's going to give us a whole lot of strength if we're only using that song and we don't have anything else to really take that pinky to the next level it's sort of just going to be stuck in that song basically you know what i mean i mean just like we always say practicing anything will, will get you better at everything um but it'll still it won't this is just like a full beneficial pinky exercise that, that really gives a lot of stretch um, not not an overstretch, just just being able to move that pinky up um, and sort of both accuracy and first finger version would be would be better. They get a nice stretch. They can use the rest of their hand to get that down. 
for some people that might be more difficult because the accuracy, you know, they might be not, you know, hitting the right string. So it'll, it'll let you know where those weaknesses are in your, in your pinky. You know what I mean? Cause this is really difficult. So Glenn, another really great pinky exercise too. This is just, this is straight strength, strength building, strength and agility building is if we just go, if we go to the bottom string, just to make it a little bit easier. And I play the, the seventh fret of the bottom string with my third finger, and I just do a hammer on pull off. I don't even have to play it first. Actually, if you don't play it first, it'll really let you get that strength. So you're just doing a hammer. You're, so you got your third finger. So on the, on the bottom string, bottom string, third finger on the seventh fret, and you just hammer on your pinky, pull it off, hammer on, pull it off. And then you go down to your, your second finger because we want to get that same strength but anchor with our middle finger. There you go. And then you go down to your first finger and pinky. Now, because that exercise solely focuses on strength and agility, that is very much so the most difficult and probably the less volume, middle ground, and then much easier. Right. But if, if that's if so, if strength is not your weakness and um, accuracy is, then this, that one will be a little bit more difficult. Right. Because now you're 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 sort of aiming from a, a higher ground. And even though we want to stay as close as we can, there's nothing that close keeping our accuracy in line. But this is much. See, this is much harder for me. If I do, if I do my ring finger part of that, this feels good. This feels a little bit better. I can tell I'm still straining a little bit, but then this sort of loosens everything up. So that means my accuracy might be a little bit, uh, a little bit ahead of where my strength and agility are using my pinky.